Hey there, here are the disclaimers for the game. Please enjoy. This maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me, the one who loves. I was a child, she was a child, in this kingdom by the sea. Day 2, The Kingdom the sun setting by the horizon colors, the grassy field into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. Your ever-beloved home, the tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while they talked with your father your only family member left. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate with the people before him, the desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time! I promise I can pay up! This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose this farmland. We've given you enough chances already, Mr. Ho. If you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. The loud ringing of the school bell rang across the hallways, make you jerk out of your thoughts. Students came out through their classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. You sat up and met face to face with Crow. Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. You let out a yawn. You rubbed your eyes as you looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats, as it is now lunchtime. What? What did I miss? Nothing important, so if you're having doubts, I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks, Crow. You're a lifesaver. Anything for you, Lion. You recall the little dream you had. You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch. Popping a few joints before you got up and went out of your classroom with Crow in tow. You met up with your group of friends, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers, Brittany coming along behind them and Jess. You waved at them. Good noon to you all. Regards, Daryl. That was class. Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more useless miner and I'll be out of here. Geo just shrugged, a hand in his hoodie pocket while the other on his phone. We got to at least do something in our major today though, which I'm glad about. More papers, but at least it was something. Enough about papers. So, about the Halloween party. Any ideas for a costume yet? As they talked with each other, at the corner of your eye, you noticed a familiar figure. Hey, it's Sol! He came out of a classroom and another person came afterwards behind him, seemingly bored out of his mind. Also, if you're wondering which route we're taking, we're actually taking the first route we've taken uh, in our last playthrough. If you haven't seen that, link to that is up there and in the description. But anyway... Uh, join... You know what? I, mean, I wanna join Sol! I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. Um, Crow, is it okay if I leave? I have somewhere to be at. Is that so? There was a slight disappointment in his voice, but he lets you continue on. Yeah, sorry I couldn't hang out. Nonsense. I'll see you after lunch instead then, Lion? If you're ever interested, of course. Of course. You give Crow one last smile before going over to where Sol is. You walk towards the two individuals. They seem to be in deep conversation. However, Sol, notice your presence and stop talking. His attention is now on you. His companion noticed the change in Sol's demeanor and followed his gaze as it landed on you. The shorter male greeted you with a smile. Hey there, friends of Sunny. Sunny? Sunny! And he gave Sol a pat on the back with a smile on his face. Sol was unamused as he tried his best to hide his red face behind his hands. You know, cause he's such a sunshine, he's Sunny! You giggled, looking over to Sol, his bright red face covered by his hand while looking away. Like a nickname? Yeah, Sonny loves the nicknames I gave him, right, Sonny? Sol didn't say anything. 
He just looked away and refused to meet your gaze. That's adorable. Hugo was a bit silent. He seemed to be analyzing your face, his head tilting slightly to the side before a smile appeared on his face. You sure have taste, Sonny. They are very pretty, like you said. Sol just gave him a dark look, telling him not to even try to go there. A blush escaped your cheeks at the gesture. Anyway, nice to meet you. My name's Hugo. I'm Sol's friend. Lie. Um, fine. A pleasure to meet you, too. He shakes your hand with a smile on his face. So, oh, oh, this is Sol. So, anyway, what are you up to, Lion? I just saw you both and wanted to greet you. More importantly, he checked Sol's hand, seeing the bandage now was gone. He assumed it got better quickly, but you wanted to make sure. Are you all right now, Sol? Sol knows exactly what you were talking about before giving you a nod and a small smile. I'm doing better. It might leave a scar, but it's nothing for me to worry about. Huh? W what? You got injured? Nothing for you to worry about. Hugo gave him a disapproving look. Sol insists him not to think about it, make his friend sigh, and leave the topic. Anyway, we're planning to go to the rooftop today and eat lunch there. The weather's doing better, unlike yesterday. You want to tag along with us, Lion? You guys aren't a fan of the cafeteria? Upon mentioning the cafeteria, Sol shivered as Hugo only gave a small chuckle. Sunny isn't a huge fan of the noise there. I heard there was a food fight that happened yesterday. Right? So, not gonna lie, a food fight sounds fun. What are you, a high schooler? Huh. At least have fun a bit, Sunny. Anyway, I'm talking. Let's get going, shall we? Sure. Hugo walked to his usual spot and got himself seated on a bench that you somehow never saw before. Saul followed, a large wrap box in his hands that caught your interest. Sit beside Saul, sit in between him, sit beside Hugo. Oh, I, I, I want to I wanna sit between him. I, I think that would be fun. I think that would be very fun. I'm going to sit between him. You pointed to the box nestled in Sol's hands. Is that your lunch, Sol? You could say that. As Sol unwrapped the cloth, it showed you three bento boxes. He takes out the first bento box on top before giving the other one to Hugo. Hugo ex happily accepted the box, uttering a small thank you to Sol before taking out his chopsticks. Hugo opened the container and let out an odd sound, his eyes sparkling. Drool slowly drops down at the corner of his lips. You actually listened, and... Did you cut these tiny sausages into octopuses? Keep your voice down, it's actually ringing my ear. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Hugo gently places the bento on his lap before rummaging through his phone. He flipped it horizontally and opened his phone's camera. A small click of the camera's sound was heard before he placed it down. Hugo took the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he was gushing about. Oh, my. Oh, my God, that is so freaking cute. <laughs> is it an adorable lion? There you see are various ranges of food with rice sheep to match a moth, seaweed to design the face along with using a cabbage leaf to form its wings. Right below the moth are mini sausages shaped like octopus, wonderfully cut carrots that were made to look like stars and squeezed beside... Stuffed shiitake mushrooms, the egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip look delicious. So made all of this? That is amazing. Jesus Christ. 10 out of 10 boyfriend. I mean, if we ever get to be with him, I almost feel bad to eat it. Uh, I'm guessing you say it's a dakimas. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't read or speak Japanese. Without wasting another second, Hugo started digging in. Did you make this yourself, Sol? You can say that, Sol answered, opening his own container. Within it was just a regular ham and cheese sandwich. He took out one piece, but before he could take a bite, he turned to you. Have you eaten, Lion? Uh, well, I have, but you know what? I'm going to say I haven't just so that we can potentially get something cute. I, I think we'll get something really cute here. Sol's eyes went wide, and Hugo gave you a look. Before you knew it, Sol took out another box, the last bento box, before giving it to you. You can have this. 
It's an extra. Why do you have an extra? I didn't like how this looked, but I figured I could let Hugo finish it. It's a waste of ingredients. Oh, she didn't have to, so really? I insist. Oh, for God's sake, just eat the same box. Hugo clearly had enough on the back and forth banters, suggested before continuing on his box. Saul hesitated at first. Eventually, he took out a spoon and fork and handed out one for you. Uh, take... I'm gonna tease him. I think they'll be fun. He declined his order of utensils, making him raise a brow in confusion. You don't want the spoon, or do you prefer chopsticks? Nothing of the sort. Then, what is it? I want you to feed me. <laughs> that nearly took so Oh my god. Hugo gave you a side eye, a judgmental look on his face as he stopped eating. He scooted the bit away from the two of you before returning to his meal. Saul, however, was nervous for a bit, his eyes still transfixed on yours, still couldn't believe what he just heard. Are you just going to keep staring at him or what? Sh shut up. I'll, um, uh, I'll feed him. Saul gripped the spoon on his hand, taking a few pieces from the bento box before turning to you. His eyes averted away from you, a wild blush on his face as he raised the spoon to your face. His hand was shaking a bit, seemingly nervous. He took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing well. It was delicious and fresh. It's amazing. Soul, this is really good. Hugo nodded along with you, boots stuffed on one cheek like a hamster. I know, right? You'd honestly be surprised. Soul. Uh, you'd make a great house husband. Soul's eyes widened at your de declaration. You really think so? I really do think so. Do you want to get... Soul is definitely house husband material, Lion. He can cook, he can clean, he can do anything. I'd rather not be your own personal butler. That was a compliment. The two banter, but he couldn't help looking at Soul. His eyes have a hint of sparkle in it. Seemed brighter. Hugo eventually finished his own box, tuck away the box and wrapping it back up. Hugo stood up from the bench, stretched his limbs, walked a few steps ahead, and looked back at the both of you. Is this what you guys do every day? You questioned, making Hugo turn to you. Or at least when you both get together? What do you mean? You mean Soul giving me lunch? He just keeps forgetting to bring his own. Hugo pouts. And you never finish yours, so I do the honor of ever finishing good food. Thank you very much. Those bento box art. What inspired them, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? Sh shut it, Gogo. Go. Gogo? Go. <laughs> oh, now you're using the nicknames now, Sonny. How sweet of you. You see here, Lion, my old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. But he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. And he really loves cute things like... Hugo turned back to Sol. Sol just stared at him, his arms crossed. What was the name of your plushy horse, Sonny? Like hell I'm ever answering that. Boo! He has a plush horse? Sol owns plushies? By now, Sol's face is beat red as he ties the banto boxes back up. He stood up from his seat before going over to where Hugo was. He stood up as well and followed along the duo. That's so cute. You keep surprising me more and more, Sol. He said nothing as he fixed his choker, the red going up to his ears at your compliment. Looks can be deceiving. This begs you to wonder, why do people never bother to notice him? Why don't people want to get to know him? Maybe they just never gave him the chance because of how he looks, not to mention his intimidating height. But in the end, he's just a gentle giant. And I love this gentle giant. By then, Hugo stopped talking. The wind picking up a bit as he went by the railings. He leaned in and placed his elbows on the cold iron surface as he looks down. Curious, you approached him and looked down to where his attention was. And there you see a group of unfamiliar people. They look so fancy. They look... Rich. Dangerous. It doesn't help that the adult with them, you're guessing a teacher, has an eye patch on his right eye. Tch. High class mugs. 
Sol let out a disgusted look at the group of well-dressed students. He didn't spare them a second glance and went back to the bench. High class? Ah, uh, you don't know about the hierarchy line? N no, not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I've heard of it. How come I never heard or seen one of them throughout my school years here? Hugo just made a low chuckle, his gaze still transfixed on the group below him. His eyes narrowed, just like Sol. He clearly doesn't like them either. I don't blame you. No one likes to talk about them anyway. High class, but hierarchy. Ooh, what? Um, okay. About the hierarchy? How come I never heard of the hierarchy before? It's like a hidden thing. Uh, that's what we call it. The school. No. The entire city. It's like a fighting pit. Whoever is the most powerful has better chance in living a good life here. People come to the school to gain a second chance in life. But to achieve that, you have to make yourself well-known. Make them think you're worth their time. If not, you're on your own. High class. He glares at the group below. This school building isn't actually the real thing. Wait, what? But the school map clearly says that the address is... That's where they actually fool you. You might think you got it right, but we are sort of based on our background. It's a real school building? Way further than where we are. And their campus is ten times bigger and better. They get proper classes, have better equipment, everything is just better. Here? We only get the short end of the stick. The afterthought, if you will. Also, why? Why is the animation so pretty? It has no right looking this pretty! What the hell? If I have to guess, the well of our in the main building? That's right. Son of a duke. Daughter of a businessman. Heck, as long as you're rich, you're in. Your chances for having better education rest there. If you are part of the high class, then you'd have a better chance of having a successful and stable life. But don't we have students here who are like super rich? You remember Jess being one. She is the daughter of a businessman. How come she's not part of the higher class? There are some who ended up shifted down and moved to our building. Either they failed a class or got a violation. They didn't want that type of stain on their reputation, so they sent them here. Of course, some didn't appreciate that. They see us as someone lower than them, hence... Hugo looks to Sol, the sin man too busy sketching on his sketch pad to notice. Oh. They have to fight the weak to feel something, huh? They sound like nothing but bullies. How come someone didn't step up to complain? Hugo, however, just laughed at you. As if you told him a very funny joke before shaking his head. <laughs> if only it was that easy. His laugh eventually died down as he scratched his head. Actually, Lion, in this city, no one really gives a damn. Money is the only thing revolving around this city. You got no cash, you're done for. Which is why people like us, he looks at you, are desperate to get into the higher class. If you so dare complain. He paused as if contemplating the words he's about to say. Judging from his entire demeanor, it's not good. Instead, he sent you a look. His once soft, sky-blue eyes are now sharp, like icicles piercing down on you. You're better off dead. Hugo glanced one last time below. The group of high-class students are now gone before averting his gaze on somewhere else. He lets out a sigh. But that's a sad reality here. The attention is good. Great, even. Your chances to get a stable life and even have a knock to stardom is high once you're part of the high class. Much less graduate there. I have nothing else to ask. This city is corrupted. He muttered under his breath. Which makes me question, Lion. How were you able to get in the city? No, the better question is, why did you enroll in the school, if you don't mind me asking? You're clearly not from here. And that he was right. Her eyes widened at the words that the well-dressed man said. No! I refuse! Lion, I told you to stay inside. You are not taking this farm! My home! You cut your father's words off, marching towards a tall man with loud and heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raised a brow at you, 
raising his hand to halt his men. His deep magenta eyes then turn to look straight into your eyes. It sent a chill down your spine. Well then, little lamb, how about this? If you manage to pay off your debts for the next five years, I'll let you off the hook and let you keep your land. Five years? You can handle that. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. Uh, ah, uh, he touched it, waving a finger in front of your face. He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. A mischievous smile appears on his handsome features. I have some conditions you have to meet. He went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with his sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The city? We can't even afford to take them to college. What more the city? The father interrupted. The man's eyes moved sideways to meet his, his figure still fixed on you. No need to worry. They'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for their education and a place to stay. The tall man lets out a laugh, his head thrown a bit back, as if he just heard a very funny joke. See? I'm not that cruel. His eyes return to you. However, in return, I want you to pay off your debt. I don't care what methods. A dark smile appeared on his face. It sent a shiver down your spine. Legal or illegal? As long as you reach the amount. If not, well... You can say goodbye to your little farmland. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eye that is telling you that that's not all. But he did not elaborate any further. You bit your lip. You turned to look at your father. His eyes were clearly telling you to decline. There was something about this man that screamed dangerous. But you were too desperate to not lose your home. Your only home. So, what do you say, Lyme? The tall man's gaze still fixed on you waiting for your answer. Do you accept? Well, Ben, here we are. <laughs> you recall the aftermath of your dream this morning, a sour look on your face as you bit your lip. Hugo takes notice of this. He paused for a bit, trying to read your gloomy expression. Let me guess, it's something you can't avoid? I honestly don't know. My father never really disclosed as to why we were in debt, but I was so desperate to not lose my only home. I need to make it up to the higher class, no matter what. Three jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. It's my last year in this cursed university, I'm, and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo's eyes are still on you. You realize you haven't answered his question yet. My family owns a business. You finally speak, making Hugo perk his eyebrows in curiosity. What sort of business does your family have? Well, we own a few farms. Sounds nice. I'd love to be out in the city once in a while. You gave him a small smile. Yeah, some might say it's boring, but it's not. You get to pet horses and cows. Well, you should really invite Sol over then, if ever. The guy loves horses. But that means you're a long way from home. Don't you ever miss it? A little bit. That's alright. It's normal to feel a little heartsick. I heard great things about the city. About the school. Hugo remained quiet, listening to you as you went on. If I can manage to come out on top and maybe part of the higher class like you said, then maybe I can save my family's farm. Hugo's arms are now crossed. He didn't say anything as he looked at you. He lets out a chuckle. You remind me of them. Like them? Ah, I'm rambling. Don't mind me. Having caught red-handed, he waved around his hands, his face now red as a cherry as it reached his ears. Just then, you felt a presence behind you. Turning around, you're met with Sol. His glare is stingy and directed at Hugo. The shorter male, however, didn't mind it. Probably used to it. It's almost time. We should head back. All right, all right. We have nothing else to do. The three of you left the rooftop. As you were walking down the stairs, however, you felt your foot slip off. You missed a step. Lion! Thankfully, Sol grabbed your waist before you could fall off the stairs as he steadied you. Whoa, you all right there, Lion? Yeah, thank you, Sol. Be careful next time. Sheesh, the school and its bad architecture. Also want a few flaws here. The stairs all wonky. It's also why it's forbidden to go up here. We're troublemakers, though. Hugo chuckled as he went down the stairs, watching his steps as he did so. Sol's arm is still secured around your waist. 
and it seems like he isn't letting you go until you're all on stable ground. The sound of the bell ringing throughout the hallways echoes through, signaling the start of next classes for some. Hugo groans. I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my archery coach. So why don't you skip then? Hugo's eyes popped open. It became bright like a light bulb just popped out on top of his head. Saul knows exactly what that look means. I'm going to skip class. How about it? Screw the school. If they're going to treat us badly, then let's be the bad guys. Hugo said that with a mischievous look on his face. Saul just sighed. He then turns to look at you, seemingly awaiting your response. The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is way of crow in art history. But then again, your teacher will probably only do some boring introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? Oh, I, 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 God damn it. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm going to make a save just for the funsies. Uh, I couldn't afford to skip this one. Although the idea of skipping seems thrilling, you can't afford to skip this one. Who knows what important projects your teacher is going to throw at you, and you're going to end up behind just because of skipping one class. Thanks for the offer, you two, but I can't afford to- WAIT! WAIT! Oh, WAIT! So I don't- Wait, so both of them are gonna skip? Oh, do I stick to my guns or do I roll it back? Mm, I'm gonna roll it back! Screw it! We ball! Hugo lets out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up. Sol gives you a cheeky smile of his own. But how do we do that, though? Obviously, we can't go through the entrance since it's closed and guarded. I know a way. Without wasting any more time, Sol leads the way, going through the backside of the school near the gardens. The edges, of course, were barricaded by a tall iron fence. Sol finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this, Sol? He did. I did! Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Sol waits for you first before falling right after. The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs. The leaves falling as you pass them. The red and orange leaves scattering around and, make, and some making its way to your uniform before you all eventually made it out and met with pavement. So, where are we going? Hugo thought for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly, he let out a gasp, scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Sol's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller man. Sherlock Holmes is out! My ears! Yeah, it's that detective movie I keep seeing on television. I thought they won't come out till next week! Did I set the date wrong? With that, Hugo starts sprinting, leaving you and Sol behind. For the love of... Saul places his hands on his hips before walking to where Hugo ran off to as you followed. Hugo kept tapping away on his phone. His shoulders went slump. Yes, he did get the date wrong. Shoving his phone back into his pocket, he turned to you when Saul. He clasped his hands together and pulled the biggest puppy eyes you've ever seen. We have got to watch it! Can we, Lion? Can we, Sonny? Hugo begged. You can go ahead and watch the movie. I'm going to roam the arcade while you're at it. Hugo pouted. His eyes went half lit and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. It's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please. Sol, however, basing off of his expression, isn't in the mood. Hugo gives up and turns to you. How about you, Lion? Would you like to watch a movie with me? The ticket and food's on me, of course. <laughs> okay, you know what? I... I want to spend more time with Soul, but, but, like, we will come back to watch the movie with, uh, with Hugo later on, so let's go to the arcade. Hugo shrugs. All right, go on your little impromptu date, then. Duh. Date? You're the one who decided we should skip class and do whatever we want. Yeah, I don't want to watch a movie. Well, then let me stop you two. Hugo stuck his tongue out at Soul. The said male only rolled his eyes. Well, I'll be heading in now. I'll give you guys a call on where to meet. Sure. You and Hugo parted ways. He gave you both a way before heading in a different direction. Sol turns to you. Should we get going, Lion? Uh, of course. 
The flashing neon lights of the arcade's exterior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ear. I've never been here before. Is this place new? Not really. It's just hidden within the city. I see. Do you get out a lot, Sol? You seem to know places. I know places because I get dragged by Hugo. Is that so? He laughed. Sol just shrugged as he shook his head. He takes out a few coins from his pocket before handling it to you. They were tokens. So, which one are you going for first? Whoa, you came prepared. As always. Sol hands out his hand and you accepted it. He held it tight with a light squeeze as you and him roam around the arcade. You and Sol went and played multiple arcade games. Some you win and some he does. But you often get the feeling he lets you win for the sake of you winning. Come on, Sol, this is like the fifth time I won. Ain't no way you're this bad. Maybe you're just that good, Lion. You flatter me. Just when you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you ran out of tokens. Sol takes notice of this and, of course, gave out some of his to you. I'll go to the counter and grab a few more tokens. You don't mind staying here for a bit, right? Um, how much do I pay you for the tokens? It's on me, so don't worry about it. Wait here. Giving you one last look, he hurriedly went to the counter. He looked around the area. The dinging sounds from various machines filled the arcade. From the corner of your eye, you spot a claw machine. Maybe playing a few games wouldn't hurt. Going to the claw machine, you check the contents inside. A cat plushie, a Shiba Inu plushie, and a horse plushie. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. Oh, the cat and Shiba Inu will be so cute, but... I know Saul would love the horse plush. Oh, he wouldn't mind getting another, right? I'll get him a horse plush. You remember how Saul likes horses. Maybe you can try to win one for him. These are his tokens, after all. You took out some of the tokens Saul gave to you and inserted one in the coin slot. The machine whirs to life as you, as you take the joystick to your left hand while hovering the red button on your right. You were focused, eyeing the claw in its position, trying to align it with the horse plush. The claw takes hold of the plush, your eyes widen as you cross your fingers, hoping it catches it. But you were interrupted with a sudden smack on your butt. You jerked and turned around. What the hell? Well, <laughs> well, well, what do we have here? You turn around and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like those typical spoiled rich kids you see in movies. His hair a bit tussled with two men you assume are his bodyguards beside him. He reeks of tobacco make you gag. He said nothing but tried to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You were guessing he's with this butthole. Oh, where do you think you're going, sweetheart? You alone? Yes, I would prefer... I would pretty much prefer to be alone. The man, however, did not listen. Why don't you come with me? I'll show you how these games are played. He raised his hand to reach his shoulders. Before he could touch you, however, you kick him between his legs. He doubled over and clenched his lower region, a groan escaping his lips. His goons were taken aback and rushed to help him. Now's my chance. Don't let him get away! Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you as you ran. You turned every corner you can, trying to make them lose you. But three against one is not a good matchup. Anyone, please, someone help me! You pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. You curse under your breath as you focus on running. Where's Saul? All you can think about at the moment is to get out. You manage to get out of the arcade, but you can clearly still hear the man and his goons on your trail. You looked around and you found a few toilet stalls. You rushed towards there and got in a stall, hurriedly opening and locking it as soon as you got in. The place stinks, but you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corner of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find them! The man's voice echoed. You try to think of something, and you thought of calling Saul. You quickly took out your phone. No signal. Are you for real now? You can hear how aggressive they tore open each stall. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Um, anyone? Please? Here you are. No, please! You've been a very bad person. Don't worry, you can make it up to me by doing me a favor. 
Screw you and your favors. <laughs> seems I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do it the hard way. He forcefully grabbed the edge of your uniform. Her eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. You quickly grab a hold of his wrist as you try to push him away. He's too strong. He forcefully lifts up your uniform, revealing his stomach to him. You're going to give me a good time, little lamb. Boys, hold him down. N no, screw off. Let me go. The tears that were hanging by finally fell down your cheeks as you tried to stop him from going any further. The two large men with him held you down as you try and struggle, but to no avail. Your vision is slowly being blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use. This grip is too strong and there's no one near to hear me. You close your eyes shut. Please just end this quickly. Well, judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off of you as he was thrown to the side. You hear flesh hitting flesh. And another one. Oh, oh, what was that? That's enough, Saul. Not yet. Oh! That's enough. You broke his nose already. No. Saul! That's enough! Lion needs your help. The dementia of your name, the familiar reddish orange eyes went wide open before turning to you. Saul quickly went to your side, his eyes white with shock before crouch crouching down and giving you a hug, his shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however, too stunned to speak to what transpired before you. The man now lay on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out on a random corner. He looked up and met with the all-too-familiar eyes of Hugo. But they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Hugo's eyes twitched as he sighed, trying to hide his visible irritation but failing. He looks around at the mess Soul made before turning to check up on you. He said nothing. Hands in his pockets while he looks down at you in Soul's embrace. It's getting quite late. We should head home. Hugo tapped Soul's shoulder, making the tall man bury his face further in between your neck before eventually letting go. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry. You aren't sure, but one thing's for sure is that this man before you cried. He cried for you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you. I... Soul. Thank you for saving me. He reached out to cup his cheek. He flinches at the touch. Tears that he was trying to hold back is now flowing freely down his cheeks. He eventually relaxes as he closes his eyes and leaned onto your hand as he held it. I don't know what I'll do if... It's okay. It's all right. Here. Beside you, Hugo extended his hand for you to take. You notice this on his other hand is the same horse plush you tried to win back in the crane game. You took Hugo's hand as he helped you get up. Soul stands as well, but backs away from you a few steps. We should head back home. It's quite late after all. Both you and Soul didn't say anything, but not along. Hugo gives both of you a smile before walking away. Sol kept a firm hold of your hand, seemingly afraid to let you go. Hugo lets out a sigh. I guess we can't get in that arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. If they ever come back, I'll give them more than just a broken nose. You're pretty scary right now, Sol. Good. I like to keep it that way. Hugo shakes his head. He rummaged through his pockets before handing Sol something. He didn't quite see what it was, but judging from the scowl on Sol's face, he didn't like it. I told you, those don't work anymore. It's because you weren't taking it, you fool. Now take it. Tonight. Sol grumbled like a child who got scolded before taking whatever Hugo gave to him and tucked it into his pockets. Anyway, your place is just around this corner. You should head back as soon as possible. I'll be taking Lion home. Sol's eyes narrowed. From holding your hand to wrapping his arm around yours in a possessive hold as he leaned closer while still glaring at Hugo. No, I can walk them home. Clearly you're not in a good condition to fight again. I can fight. There was something in Hugo's eyes that made your blood cold. The usual happy-go-lucky expression he had on his face was gone. Looking back at Sol, 
He seems unfazed by it, as if challenging him. Hugo's right. Soul, you look beaten up. But Lion, at least they know their limits. Soul says nothing but clenches his fists. You notice a few red marks on his knuckles. Your eyes furrowed. I'm fine, Lion. Soul tries to reassure you. You shook your head no. Well, for me, you ain't. You look up and gave him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine, Soul. Besides, I have Hugo to keep me safe. You go home first and get some rest. All right. Oh, Soul, wait, before you go. He paused in his tracks. He raised his brows in curiosity. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arms, you gently hand it over to him, catching him by surprise. Soul, however, shook his head no and gave the horse back to you. His hands wrapped around your hands as he, as you hold the toy horse. You want that. Plus, I don't deserve it. Not after that. But I want it for you. Consider this as your reward for saving me. Soul stares at you in disbelief, from your face to the stuffed horse in your hands. His hands were shaky as he takes the toy horse from your hands, brushing your fingers, making him shiver. I'll take care of it, Lion. I swear to you. He squeezed your hands, too hesitant to let you go, before his hole eventually slipped as he lets go. With that, Soul takes his leave. He walks backwards, his eyes still on you, making sure you are in his sight before properly walking up front. Hugo sighs. You turn to face him. Well, ain't he a charmer? Is it working? He raised the brow at his question. Working what? Charming you, obviously. Don't worry, this is a secret between you and me. He says with a finger on his lips and a wink. You blushed. He's nice. I owe him my life after that. And... And? You chuckle, thinking about the long-haired male. He is handsome, I'll admit that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's with that smirk on your face? Uh, nothing. Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softened. Take you a bit aback as he looked down on the pavement below, kicking a pebble. Have you ever liked someone, Lion? What's with this sudden question? Just the answer. You pause as you thought for a second. But the first person that appeared in your mind was... Soul. You thought of Soul. How he protected you. How he didn't hesitate to beat those guys down. The pure terror in his eyes. How worried he was. You couldn't get it out of your head. He's been an amazing friend. Even if he did beat up those guys. Don't stop. Is it a red flag? Maybe. Do you care? Maybe not. A smile has made its way on its on your face, and it was enough of a confirmation for Hugo. Eventually, you arrive at the door of your apartment. You thank Hugo for accompanying you. He gives you a smile, rubbing the back of his head. I'll see you tomorrow, Lion. Sorry the day didn't go well. It's okay, Hugo. Uh, we're going to have a proper plan next time. Of course. Hugo nodded. He turned his heel, his back facing you, ready to leave. But he remained still on his spot. Lion? Yeah? Be careful walking late at night, okay? He paused, turning your head slightly at him. There has been multiple cases of missing people lately. I suggest you go home with someone. Anyone. Just don't go alone, alright? I understand. Missing people? When did that happen? No, when did it start? One last thing, Lion. He turned his head around as he looks at your confused face. His eyes soft, but the light against him seems like they were giving you a warning. Take care of soul for me, okay? And with that, he left. You entered your apartment. The lights dim as you groaned, searching for the light switch. Much better. You nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. You open your fridge and start rummaging around for something to eat. You sigh as nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday dinner. You shrugged, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. You don't really feel like cooking or ordering, either. You sighed as you close the door to your fridge as you made your way to your room. You place your school bag near your desk as you take your seat, skimming through the notes you've taken for the day as you wrote down some needed notes. You click your tongue as you tap to your blank notebook with the tip of your pen, 
going on with your silent staring contest with the blank paper before you let out a groan. Deciding to do work later, you closed your notebook and stood up. You turned to your window, noticing it being slightly ajar. That's weird. That's how I closed this. You went near to close it shut, but was met with now a broken lock. You cursed. I thought I'd already replaced this two days ago. Maybe I shouldn't buy my locks online. You let out a groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into your living room. Your TV blared as you munched on some leftovers you got from the fridge, a movie cardly playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about, starring her favorite lead actor. You kind of get what she was gushing about. The lead does look attractive. Blonde wavy hair with sharp eyes, with eyes as pink as Fushia. And you still can't remember the actor's name. You took out your phone and you start to search up the name of the actor when it suddenly changed. Instead of the blonde actor on the screen, a report comes instead with banner below. Another missing person case. Is this what Hugo was talking about? A shiver went up your spine, remembering the broken lock of your window back in your bedroom. No, no, not tonight, lion. No scary thoughts for tonight. Turning off the TV, you went to your kitchen to grab something to drink. You open your fridge, feeling the cold air hitting your face as you rummage through. Take out a pitcher of orange juice. You take a glass from your cupboards as you pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. You check the clock on the wall. 9.30 p.m. That late already, huh? You check your front door and windows, seeing everything locked before grabbing a glass and finishing the last drops of the orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. Huh. Now dressing your nightwear, you let out one last stretch, a yawn escaping from your mouth. Getting in your bedsheets, you laid in comfort. Today it was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escaped your lips. You must be really tired, you thought, your eyes going half-lidded. And eventually, sleep took over. The moon was high up in the sky. The night is quiet, save for a few late-night calls, but that is not enough to wake these sleeping residents. What the hell? Huh? Still broken, huh? You should be careful, Pumpkin. Clad in all black, with a mask of the same color adorning his face, he slowly makes his way next to the sleeping figure. His reddish eyes bright, filled with adoring love. He reaches out and strokes a finger against his beloved's cheek. Look at my sleepy sweetheart. Makes me wonder who supplies Hugo these sleeping pills. He lets out a low chuckle as he leans closer to Lion. Pulling down his mask, he leans forward, checking them, checking their face before continuing. He bares his face at the dip of their shoulders as he leaves the peck. He takes a deep inhale. He shakes as if he took a whiff of a dangerous and addictive drug. His eyes bright as he examines every feature of his soulmate's face as he gives Lion's cheek a kiss. God, you smell so good. Pardon me. He lifted their arm and watched as it flops down on. Deep in sleep, like Sleeping Beauty. He nibbles their neck, earning him a soft whimper from the sleeping individual. He just chuckled. Quite ticklish, aren't you? And he kept going. He kissed them and lapped on the same spot to the point a mark started to form. Those filthy scum thought they could touch you. His eyes slanted in anger. His grip on the edge of the bed tightens as he wrinkles the sheets. His breathing heavy. You're mine. No one else's. You belong to me. If I ever see them again, I'll kill them. Tucking a loose strand away from your face, he gives Lion a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Lion's lips. A shiver ran down his spine at the contact. As much as he would love to stay a bit longer, his time is due. He backs away as he covered his face once again with his face mask. He walked towards the ajar window, turning back one last time. Sir, about your window, pumpkin. I'll make it up to you someday. He carefully opens the window again. And with that, he's gone. Oh, damn. Right, now I'm gonna go watch a movie with Hugo and see where this goes.
Hugo gives you a bright smile. Heck yeah! I knew you were a trooper lion. Come on, let's go grab some tickets and snacks. You want popcorn or something else? Short Mill went along ahead towards the movie theater with you coming along, pulling up behind him. Sol clicked his tongue. He shoved his hands in his pants pocket as he followed along behind you. Hugo took notice of this and raised a brow. Huh? I thought you weren't interested in the movie, sonny boy. Maybe you're right. It does look interesting. Stop making it! Let's go. Sol takes hold of your wrist and drags you away from Hugo and to the movie theater. Uh, hey! Come back here! I'm talking to you! Sol went ahead to the counter and bought tickets for the three of you. Sol turned around and gave one ticket to you. His fingers brush, your fingers brush with his, causing him to blush. Finally caught up to you two, Hugo pouted as he crossed his arms, looking at Sol. I thought the tickets were on you, Hugo. It is, but I guess it's on Sol now. Not that I'm complaining or anything. This is supposed to be my treat. Oh well, food's still on me. Hugo scurried off to the food booth, leaving you and Sol one last time. He walked towards the now showing pictures, examining the poster. Sherlock Holmes, huh? So Hugo's into detective movies. He turned to us, Sol. He placed a hand on his hip as he checked the poster next to you. You can see that. He aspires to be one. That is quite charming of him. And Sherlock Holmes is its inspiration? It's just one of them. I see. How about you, Sol? What's your favorite genre? Sol raised his brows at you. He placed a finger on his chin and he looked up, staring at the ceiling. I like supernatural horror and thriller. Along with the tales of the Headless Horseman, or those original fairy tales by the Grimm Brothers. Ugh. Those all sound so gruesome. I bet you feel weirded out by it. What do you mean? I love those! Really now? Of course I do! I think they're very interesting, and I love the thrill they give. And besides, I, lo I love reading up on lore. Sol stares at you in awe before a smile breaks out on his face. Then, maybe we could watch one together. I'm back! Hugo's familiar voice was heard. He turned around and saw him walking towards both of you. Two large bags filled with popcorn on each arm, and a large cup being held. Oh, let me... He said, taking one bag from Hugo's arms. He thanks you for the help. Yeah, I've got snacks. Hope you like popcorn. He then turns to Sol. Come on, let's get in before the movie starts. Sol nods as you and Hugo follow him towards the entrance of the movie theater. He hands you the three tickets, then the three of you enter. This isn't it. The piece wants you to believe it's the ultimate evidence for this case, when in fact... You were halfway through the movie, the bag of popcorn halfway finished. You looked at the blue-haired male to your left and his gaze is transfixed on the large screen before you. Hugo, during the beginning of the film, was really giddy, but now he was silent, seemingly engrossed with the scene happening in the movie. His hand goes on autopilot as he munches on each bite of popcorn. To your right, Sol, surprisingly, was also too engrossed with the movie before him. You need to pee. You've been holding it in for a while since you don't want to miss out on the important scenes, but other nature is knocking so hard on your door. He tapped on Sol's shoulder. He turned his attention to you. You need something? I need to use the bathroom. Want me to accompany you? That's fine. Just enjoy the movie. Sol gave you a nod, and you took it as a signal to stand up from your seat, ducking down, making sure not to block the screen for the viewers at the back, as his bad walk towards the movie theater's comfort room. Hmm. Jeez. It was really getting interesting, too. I'll probably just ask Hugo what happened when I was gone. Well, time to head back. The forceful opening of the door startled you. A few grunts were heard, and the shuffling of feet as if they were in the struggle. He went quiet. Better speak up, or else. I don't know what you're talking about. How many times do I have to tell you? That is bull. Ah! Your eyes widened as the breathing stopped. He quietly but quickly went to the nearest toilet stall. What is going on? A fight? In the cinema of all places? Whatever is going on by the door is clearly something you don't want to get involved with. Just tell us who is the traitor that you're in cahoots with, and I'll let you go. Again! I have no idea what you're talking about! Guess I have no choice. 
Hey, yo! You hear the sound of the light bulb being popped along with a portion of the comfort room's light going dim. Only half of the room is now lit up. P please I don't know! I swear! Give you one last chance, buddy. A little shuffling was heard. The rough voice seems to whisper something that you cannot hear. Then you hear breathing as it gets shorter and heavier. He's here! I swear, just look around! You're bound to find him here! Please, just don't kill me! Maybe the gun's too merciful. The nose! Your nose caught something. It stings as it fills the air, the edges of your eyes watering. You then felt something wet hitting the tip of your shoes. You looked down and your eyes widened. What? Oh, oh, Frick, oh, Frick, oh, Frick, oh, Frick, oh, Frick! Someone just got killed! And the body's right in front of your stall! Uh -huh. Um, someone else here. Did he hear me? Well, well, well. Seems like we have a lost lamb on our shoulders. Then you hear the stall one block away from you was roughly opened. Huh. Not here, huh? Come on, little lamb. Don't try to hide. I need to do something. You quickly looked around, trying to find a way to escape. There's nothing but a small rectangular window just above the toilet. You can try to pry it open and call out for help. I feel like I'm getting closer to you. It's about to open my stall! What should I do? And why don't these stalls have locks? Ah, Thrindo! Without much thought, you quickly step on the toilet seat and try to pry open the small rectangular window. It won't budge! Then you hear your stall opening, and there you see a tall man, roughly six foot eight. He's dressed in all black. Black leather gloves adorning his hands, and one of them is a gun with a silencer attached to it. And below him is the bloody body of another man. That must be the meek voiced man you heard. Well, hello there, little lamb. You seem quite lost there. Sadly, I can't let any witnesses go loose. Please don't! He did, however, not listen to your pleas. He takes his gun as he loaded it with a click. I'm going to die! Oh! Then you felt a hand coming to touch your hair. You flinched. You slowly backed away, your legs shaking as you still refused to open your eyes. Your arms wrapped around you. Line, it's okay. And you hear that all too familiar voice. I'm here, Line. It's all right. Oh, this bathroom looks like a mess. Before you was Saul. Right behind it was Hugo. Both of their expressions are filled with worry. But your focus was on the splattered blood across the walls. Hugo notices this and tries his best to block the view. Saul's hand then went up to reach you, but he was stopped midway, afraid as if he'll burn you. Without even thinking, you quickly wrap your arms around Sol, your shoulders shaky as you buried your face in his chest. Sol took this as a sign and gently wrapped his big arms around you, a hand coming to caress your hair, trying to comfort you as you shook in his hold. Can we get out of here? Please? Without much of a word, Sol escorted you out of the scene before you, his hold tight and secured around your shoulders. Sol gives Hugo a look, and the shorter man just sighed, waving his friend away with a fanning motion. I'll take care of it. You and Sol left. Hugo let out an irritated tsk as he looks down at the two bodies on the ground. God, what a pain. The sky is now dark, indicating it's near night. He finally got out of the movie. He looked down and stared at his shoes, noticing a few splatters of blood. He gripped Sol's arm. He took notice and looked at your shoes. Seeing the blood, he kneeled down on one knee and took out his handkerchief. No, it it's all right. Doubt it. He wiped the blood off his shoes before folding his handkerchief and shoving it deep in his pockets. He looks at your disheveled look. Let me ask you again. You all right, Lion? Um... I'm not. How and why? You ask no one. The terrifying experience kept repeating in your mind. Sol broke your trail of thought by placing his large hand on top of your head. You looked up at him, and he gave you a soft, reassuring smile, his hand now off of your head. Don't think about it anymore. What matters is that you're here with me. He looked around you and noticed that Hugo wasn't around. 
Oh, where's Hugo? He's got it covered. Don't even worry about him. How about I walk you home? Huh? You know, to keep you safe. I'll keep you company. I'll keep you safe. You trust me? I... I trust you. Then let me take care of you. Sol gently takes hold of your hand and wraps it around his larger one, his gaze never leaving yours, a bright smile on his face. Lead the way then. You felt safe. Safe with someone. Safe with Sol. The walk back to your apartment was quiet, save for a few nightly bugs making a few hums here and there. Sol's hand is still wrapped around yours. He's warm. You couldn't help but steal a few glances at Sol. He looks back at you. He said nothing, but the more he stared at you, the more longing his eyes were giving. Ah! He gives you another one of his bright smiles. He squeezes your hand. You squeeze back. Make him chuckle. What is it? Nothing. Your hand feels cold. Let me fix that. He hummed as he raised the hand he was holding. Uh. There. Now it feels warmer. He teased. A blush of his own appearing on his face. Uh, I, uh... That's not how you warm someone's hand up! Is that so? I'd love to see how you would do it. So! He just laughed at you, his face still red as you playfully hit his side. Eventually, your walk came to an end when you met with the front door of your apartment. You let go of Sol's hand. Um, he nearly reached out to keep his hold but stopped himself. You turned to face him. Well, this is my place. Oh. I'll see you tomorrow then? Uh, of course. But we don't have classes together tomorrow though. That's alright. Maybe we can hang out after your classes to continue on with the project? I'll keep your word for it then. You turn to face your apartment's front door, taking out your keys and finding the one you need. But before you inserted the key to your apartment, you turn your head to look at Sol's tall figure still unmoving from his position. Thank you for today. I really owe you one. He paused, then his shoulders relaxed. Don't worry about it. Just know that you can count on me. Locking your front door, you fully turn around to give Sol one last wave with a smile on your face. He returned with his own smile before walking off towards the exit. You entered your apartment, and this is where we skip ahead. You've really caused me some trouble today. So what's you? You traitor. What? My gun? Hey, yo! Why does Hugo have a gun? <laughs> Who would have thought? Our sweet doggy is biting their master's hand. So, not gonna lie, you should have seen this coming. You're talking too much. You haven't fired a gun since ages ago. <sighs> Damn it. They're slowly figuring me out. I don't think I could make it for the next few days. Sonny, you've done enough for me. I think. This is the end of our deal. Okay, so now we're back at school. I'm just gonna say I can't afford to skip this class just for now. Also, the idea of skipping seems thrilling. You can't afford to skip this one. Who knows what important projects your teacher is going to throw at you, and you're going to end up behind just because of one skipped class. Thanks for the offer, you two, but I can't afford to miss this one. Hugo's shoulders slumped down, quite disappointed. That's alright. Maybe we can hang out next time, then. Sol turns to you. Would you like me to accompany you to your next class? I get to chill with Sol! I didn't think that this was a thing that could happen, but okay. Of course. I appreciate that, Sol. I'll see you at the usual spot, Sol. Sol nods at Hugo before the set male walks away, waving as he leaves. You and Sol walk through the hallway, towards your next class's classroom. You couldn't help but to check on Sol. He seems nervous. You look down and see that his hand is shaking. I'll, I'll take his hand. A little bit of hand holding wouldn't hurt. Reaching to his hand, you gently wrapped your hand around his. His hand stopped shaking, but it went stiff. Before he eventually relaxed and intertwined its fingers with yours. This makes you smile. The walk was silent, but no words needed to be said to see the growing smile on his face. You finally reached the front of your classroom door. 
You peeked inside through the door's window and saw Crow in his usual seat already. You turned your attention back to Sol. Thanks for escorting me to class, Sol. It's not a problem. His tiny smile didn't last long on his face, however. His shoulders slumped down. So, could have wished you would have come with us. Maybe next time. No, so we don't get to spend time with him. Frick. Maybe we can hang out on a weekend or on a free schedule. Sure. His words contradict his expressions as it lacks enthusiasm. Just then, the door to your classroom opened, and there you met Eyes of Crow. Crow's eyes lit up once he saw you. There you are, Lion. Just in time for the next class. Oh? He was about to greet you, but felt Soul's presence beside him. And who might this fellow be? Classmate of yours? You can say that, Crow. This is Soul. He's from my art class, Soul. This is Crow. Pleasure to meet you, Soul. Crow extended his hand for Soul to shake. Soul just stared at him. Kinda awkward, man. A few awkward seconds passed by before he eventually took Crow's hand. Soul, however, wasn't regulating his strength as he gripped Crow's hand with much force. Crow winced from the pressure but didn't say anything before Soul eventually let go of his hand. Soul then turned to you. I should be going now, Lion. I'll see you soon. Just kinda wish you would come with. He sighed, reaching out to tuck a loose strand of hair away from your face, earning him a small blush from you. Soul turned on his heel and walked off. He looked at his retreating figure before Crow eventually tapped your shoulder. We should get going. With one last glance at Soul's retreating figure, you turned around and got inside your classroom. You got to your usual seat. Crow takes his usual seat by the window in front of your own seat, waiting for the classroom to settle down as your professors come in. All right, class, settle down. Y'all better turn in. You y'all better turn in this upcoming paper if you don't want to end up having no grades in your card. And that means. The professor slams down his thin notebook, the loud slap echoing through the room. You all aren't able to graduate, much less make it to the higher class. Now, I'd like all of you to think of a short story based on any type of literature. Bonus points if you can source out where you got your inspiration along with references. I'll be checking those the most. You hear a few whispers from a few of your classmates as they talk with each other. Unfortunately for them, your professor notices them as he slams his thin notebook again on the desk, making some of you jolt from your seats. Now, I can allow you all to head to the library to do your research or stay here and brainstorm. You may begin. Pearl stands up from his seat, gathering his things, then turning to you. I'm going to the library. Would you like to join me? He perked up and nodded. Pearl waits for you as you gathered your things before leaving the classroom and to the library. The library, as of the moment, has less students, some doing research like you and Crow, and some just minding their own business. They'll go find us a table. The usual place, please. Of course. He says with a smile as he sets his eyes on the table near the large windows, your usual spot and your favorite in this library. While Crow went to your usual table, you on the other hand went near the tall bookshelves, checking each spine to see if something might catch your interest. You've been going through spines and spines of books, but nothing ever caught your eye or interest. You eventually gave up and picked up the closest book near you. It was a bit heavy. A biography of Marie Antoinette. Your eyebrows raised in curiosity. Who knew a random book would do the trick? You flipped it open and you were met with a very well-drawn portrait of a very prestigious-looking woman. Flipping through more and more of the pages, your eyes landed on a drawn figure of the same woman, but... Her kneeled before a guillotine. Quite a spoiler, but you read through the text below the illustration. The execution. Such a gruesome end, you thought. Deciding with this book, you tucked it under your arm. You take a look one last time around the bookshelves, maybe finding something of the same genre. You notice a peculiar book stick out at the very edge of the bookshelf. It was a bit worn out and dirty. You're kind of wondering how it ended up there. You inch a bit closer to it. The spine didn't have anything on it besides a few worn edges. You got on your tiptoes as you reach out to grab the book. However, the moment you grab and pull it out, the bookshelf started wobbling. You immediately stopped. Keep prying it out. With determination, you held onto the shelf, making sure not to make it wobble any further, as you take a firm grip on the worn book. Come here, 
You... Ah, got it! Whoa. The bookshelf shook a bit. You extended your arms as you tried to rebalance it. A few books fell then and there, make you wince. Oh, no one heard that. Anyway, what is this that's so stuck to the damn thing? You flipped open the cover, only to see a blank page. No author whatsoever, save for the paper, the edges of it a bit yellow from age. The dust isn't helping either. You flip a few more pages and you finally get to see some printed words on it. The various torture devices and executions of the medieval times. How did this end up here in the school library? Then again, I might be able to get some material out of this. You shrug, closing the book. You tuck it under your arm and left the area, going to where Crow is. Oh, there you are, Lion. Have you found anything useful for your paper? Took a while. Nothing caught my eye from the books but this one. You raised the large book and showed it to Crow. The Queen herself. That's pretty interesting. What kind of paper are you going to make out of it? I was thinking maybe about how a tyrant royal turned good, but was punished regardless for her actions. How does that sound? Kinda idealistic. Crow was silent for a moment, making you tilt your head. Maybe he didn't hear you correctly. That actually sounds nice, Lion. Can I ask what's the inspiration? Oh, just thought about something today. And about something, you remember your conversation with Hugo back at the rooftop. Also, maybe I could get some extra points from the professor. He said with a wink and a nudge. Crow just chuckled. Is that so? Very smart thinking of you, Lion. Why, thank you. He said with a bow, making Crow chuckle at your actions before you both settled down on the chairs from your table. You skimmed through the book, taking a few notes here and there for important bits you could use. At the corner of your eye, you notice how Crow's eyebrows tend to furrow as he goes through his books. His leg is shaky underneath the table. His figure leaned a bit forward as he rubs his temples. You notice how he keeps tapping the tip of his pen on his paper, but not writing anything. He seems restless about something. Crow? Upon hearing a voice, Crow's legs stop shaking before facing you, forcing his expression to soften, but the sweat drop from his temple says otherwise. He's trying so hard to keep a calm face. Yeah, Lion? Something the matter? You're right. You barely wrote anything and you seem nervous. There's something bothering you. Crow gave you a soft, yet sad smile. Yeah, I'm fine. Crow paused, his eyes averted from yours, refusing to look at them directly. His silence is deafening. It makes a heart race from nervousness. You think the queen was a good person, Lion? Nope! Probably not! Huh? The sun question caught you by surprise. My thoughts about Marie Antoinette. Read a few textbooks and documentaries. Each have their different views about her, both negative and positive. I'd like to hear from you, since this is your source of reference. The sudden interest about your paper confuse you. Does it have to do something about the queen herself or the situation? I had the way you thought about his question. Uh, mm, uh, oh god, I am... I... I don't know. I don't know much about Marie Antoinette, except for the fact that um, she didn't actually say let them eat cake. That's a terrible mistranslation. What she did say was let them eat brioche, which is still incredibly tone deaf. But, you know, she was horrible. She was, she, no, I, I, don't, I don't like her. Nah. She was ignorant. She raved while people were starving. Is that so? Quite rude to be partying around while thousands of people are dying from hunger, don't you think? Crow was silent, somehow waiting for more input from you. But once he sensed you weren't adding anything, his shoulders slumped. You're right. I will be angry too. Wait, wait, wait. What happens if we said uh, we, we think she's good? What, what's the insight there? She was a good person. I believe she was a nice person. What makes you say that? She did try her best to be charitable and she was humble. People just misjudged her. If you think about it, she was just a child when she was made queen. She was? Wouldn't you be overwhelmed by the sudden responsibility placed upon you? You're very much right about that. Thank you for your input, Lion. For a moment, you saw a glint in Crow's eyes. A sign of relief. Relief for what? Regardless, it seemed to calm him down as he started writing on his paper, going word after word. Uh... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling red flags from Crow, or like, intrigue. I, I have no idea. I have no idea here. 
That at least inspired him a bit. He smiled. You stretched out your arms, letting out a sigh of relief. Look at your paper that you've made as you skimmed through it one last time. You were too caught up with your conversation with Crow. You nearly forgot about the worn book you brought along with. You picked it up and started flipping through the first few pages. Torture devices. Execution devices. Why are you reading this? You turn to another page, and on it is a well sketch of a tall and bulk man, his face covered as he wields a large axe. Ooh! His arms are filled with scars, while around his neck is a chained collar. It looks like those killers you would see in slasher films. Underneath the illustration, it reads Executioner. Some executioners were feared by the public, while the rest respected them, but mostly people shunned them for their field of work. The old times were brutal. You muttered under your breath as you closed the book and stacked it on top of the other books you and Crow brought. You handed out your paper to Crow as he gladly accepts it and stacks it along with his own paper. Shall we get back? You nod along after you, you finish stacking the books you borrow for the librarian or her assistants again. Can't wait for the day to end. Same here. Crow chuckles as you and him left the library. The day eventually came to an end. A few rays of the sunset light shine through the hallways as you and Crow walk through the hallway. You have anything else to do today, Lion? Well, I have to do some quick grocery shopping before I head home. Ah, well, in that case, would you mind me accompanying you? Really? It's fine if you don't, or, you know, if you have other things to do. Like, look after... look for Brittany and the others? Not really. Besides, Daryl has after class practice. Same with Geo. As for Brittany and Jess, they're catching up on their business proposal. But don't you also need to catch up? I could do them tomorrow. I'd like to spend more time with you today, Lion. Your voice got caught in your throat. You can feel how your face heated up. Stupid crow, stupid feelings. Alright then. Crow lets out a small cheer. He just giggled as you both went out of the campus. Do I have feelings for Crow? Huh. You shared a few conversations with Crow along the way as you helped, as he helped you with your little shopping, in which he bought a few as well for himself during the trip back to your apartment. Before you knew it, you were faced with the front door of your apartment. You frowned. Well, this is my stop. Thanks for coming along with me, Crow. You turned to face him with a smile, but it disappeared upon meeting his blue eyes in the darkness of the night, shown by the window behind him. Crow takes notice of your gloomy expression and gives your head a pat as he brushed through your locks. Then it went to your cheek, causing you to look up at him. Why the long face? Well, we rarely get to spend time together like the old days. Today just reminded me of it. it sounds selfish. You nervously laugh, averting your gaze away from him. Crow was quiet for a while, seemingly to think hard on your words before another smile broke through his face, his hand on your head coming to rest on your cheek. No, I agree. I'll have to spend an entire day with you. Even a month if you like. Just come to me and I'll put everything aside for you. You stared at him in awe. You could barely believe what he just said. Do you really mean that? I do. We can start by letting me walk you home after classes with you if you'd like. Don't hesitate to ask me, okay? I'll see you tomorrow, Lion. Good night. Crow waved a small wave at you. You returned it with your own slow one, still awestricken with his little proposal. And with that, he's out. You press your palm to where your heart was, feeling the rapid beating of the damn organ. Well, we're back in apartment. I guess we'll skip ahead, unless of course there's nothing else, and in which case we will head over to the next set of choices. Okay, so we're back uh, at one of the first few choices we had, which was to join Soul, call Soul over, or stay with the group. Apparently, calling Soul over and uh kind of leads you down to either joining soul or staying with the group uh i do want to see what happens when we call soul over without much thought you walk to where soul is as he is almost immediately as he almost immediately notices you a smile appearing on his face his companion notices his change in attitude and turn towards you okay we've already seen all this let's skip ahead then you hear a group of footsteps behind you hugo first noticed the group behind you as he raised his head to meet one of their gazes there you are, Lion. You just ran off like that, and I kind of got worried. You with these people, Lion? Oh, that's right. Sorry for running off like that. Um, yeah. Soul, 
Here you go. These are my friends. You turn your body to face Crow and the others while her gaze is still fixed on the duo. Crow gives the two a smile and a small wave. Daryl come up Daryl came up first, extending his hand for one of the two to take. Nice to meet you. I'm Daryl. I haven't heard yet. I'm the ace of our school's football club. He said with a smile. Hugo took his hand with a shake. Following up is Brittany, and she just stares with a hand on her hip while Jess was twiddling with her fingers as she stuck close to Brittany's side. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Between Brittany, Jess, and Daryl, it seems that only that only is the most enthusiastic one out of all of them in his newfound friendship. Only who? I'm Hugo. I've heard about you, Daryl. Nice to meet you too. Thankfully, Hugo returned the same energy as the jock. I'm Jericho, but most people call me Crow. Nice to meet your acquaintance. Crow also handed out his hand for Soul to shake. However, Soul did not take it. There was a slight awkwardness in the air between the two males, making Crow slowly retrace his hand back. No way! The atmosphere between the two, however, was cut short when Hugo gave out a loud gasp and marched towards Gio, who was way behind the group, a visible scowl on his face. Gio's eyes darken as he tries to take a step back, but Hugo was quick on his feet as he engulfed the taller male into a hug. I don't speak Japanese! <laughs> oh, you guys are like, you, you guys are so lucky that I'm able to give you guys a translation on these. <laughs> I can't speak any of this. I didn't want to see your ugly face the entire day. No, the entire semester. My luck seems to be slipping. Hey now, that's not a nice way to greet your brother. Another loud gasp was heard. This time it came from Daryl. He points at Gio quite dramatically. You have a brother, Gio? Oh, another one. That's big brother to you. Hugo, Hugo's the big brother? Everyone's attention was now on the three of them. Brittany seemingly amused by Gio's newfound dilemma. Crow just chuckled while Jess was surprised as well. All right. Hugo started, finally letting go of Gio, the said male cursing under his breath as he composed himself and fixed his now ruffled hair as he walked towards you. We were actually going up to the rooftop for lunch today. We we're hoping that you would like to come with us. He says, now standing beside Sol. Sol looks at you with anticipation. You... Um, okay, my canonical route is that I join Sol and Hugo. Okay, that's my canonical route. I think... I would have had these groups meet. Actually, that would have been a lot more fun. Um, but, you know, just for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to stay with the group. You give Hugo a sad smile. I'd love to join you, Hugo, but I'd like to stay with him today if that's all right. Hugo gives you a sad smile of his own before nodding his head, failing to notice how one of Soul's eyes twitched. Ah, it's all right, Lion. But hit us up if you ever want to hang, okay? He nodded as he gave you an enthusiastic thumbs up. Before you could turn to Sol to apologize to him too, Hugo quickly dragged him away. You notice how his strides were slow and hesitant as Hugo drags him away. He shrugged before returning with Crow and the rest of the group. The school surprisingly has a public garden with a greenhouse just a few steps ahead. Multiple courses would go and plant needed flora, depending on their necessities, or sometimes the school nurse would spend her time leisuring around and bracing the fresh air. You happen to be a volunteer and taking care of the garden, along with the plants in the greenhouse, hence explaining how you got a set of keys. It just reminds you of home. Brittany went ahead and laid down a large picnic basket under a large tree in the middle of the field. She set down the basket and started taking out some content. Daryl and Jess followed along while Gio leaned against the bark of a tree. Ah! Not yet. Brittany slapped Daryl's hand away from the basket before he could rate the whole thing, making him wince and pout. Calm your butt down. You'll have your turn. At this point, I'll have to charge you every time y'all hit me. Are you some sort of masochist? Hey, yo! Daryl gave Gio a side eye. Brittany shook her head while Jess just giggled. 
It was a cute little get-together that Brittany planned last night. She wanted to make a few sandwiches, so she prepared lots of varieties. On the blanket are a few Tupperwares with some of the sandwiches inside while the rest were eaten. Everyone got their first share already, but now everyone is just minding their own business. Daryl's having the time of his life with two sandwiches on both his hands. Brittany and Jess are talking. Geo's a bit further away from the group, leaning on the bark of the tree, seemingly lost in thought, and Crow is nowhere to be seen. Ooh, ooh, I got choices. Let's speak with Gio. You were quite hesitant to approach Gio at first. You, already, you always saw him as someone quite intimidating. More intimidating than Brittany. It's probably the way he carries himself. His towering height isn't helping either. It seems like you've been staring at him for too long. He stopped chewing on his sandwich as his gaze met yours. He shivered. What do you want? Um, I've got questions. Hurry up and spit it out. You and Hugo know each other? His eye twitched. You think you hit a nerve there? I don't, and I don't want to associate myself with him. Whatever he said back in the hallway, just forget it. Is that so? If that's all you have to say, then leave. Wait! Actually, I'm curious as to why... Why do you hang out with us? I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just that I'm curious. You don't seem the type to... His piercing gaze made your voice die down. You curse under your breath. Oh god, I think this is it for me. I get it. Ed, you won't understand. Leave me to my devices. Now. He demanded before wrapping the half-eaten sandwich he had in his hand before throwing it towards you. You caught it, nearly losing your balance. He gives that to Daryl. I just lost my appetite. Joe then crossed his arms and looked up at the sky. The chilly autumn breeze passing by him. Make his long hair sway along with his washy earrings. You took a look at the wrapped half eaten sandwich in your hand. I guess I'll never know. You sigh. Speak to Daryl. Daryl seems to be the least busy out of everyone. You approached his sitting figure as he took a seat in front of him. One sandwich gone from his hand as he munched on the other one on his other hand. He notices you and stops eating, tucking away the sandwich and placing all of his attention on you. Here. He took out the half-eaten sandwich he got from Gio and handed it to him. He tilted his head to the side. You can't finish yours? It's from Gio. Really now? Not gonna lie, it's quite uncharacteristic of him. Usually he will either finish it or throw it away. Not that I'm complaining though. Thanks, Lion. Daryl thanked you with a smile and took the half-eaten sandwich from your hands before tucking it away. You got something to ask me, Lion? Yeah, why are you so cute? Uh, about Gio. What are your thoughts on Gio? Daryl smiled as he leaned a bit forward. Now, Ge now Gio's my favorite guy. Even if he's a bit of a meanie sometimes. What makes you stick to him? Isn't he mean to you like you said? Daryl smiled brighten as his eyes went soft. His side -eye he side-eyed the male by the tree who had his arms crossed. Gio's attention was somewhere else. People are scared of him. It's probably because of his background. What about it? thing is, no one really knows what his family does other than the fact that they're super rich and that they are highly involved with the founder of the city. People have seen him with his bodyguards, all rugged and tall and very intimidating. Heck, I even saw one with a huge katana on their backs. You shivered. Clearly you don't want to deal with them. But what makes you not scared, Daryl? I mean, you clearly know what his family and himself is capable of. You see, Lion, I'm not really scared of him. On the outside, he's all stubborn and cruel. But on the inside, he's a really nice guy. Think of him like a... Uh, he pursed his lips, thinking a bit. Like a durian? He's like a stubborn cat. Good enough for me. He glanced back at Gio one more time. You are seeing the cat ears and the tail, all right. Now that you think about it, we have this vision based on Daryl's declaration. Gio does not seem quite intimidating anymore. How cute. Then you hear a sigh from Daryl. You return your attention to him, an elbow on his leg as he held his face in his hand. Which begs me to wonder, how he ended up being in the lower class of us? The low class? How do we have things like that? Oh? You don't know about the hierarchy line? He shook your head no and Daryl scratched the back of his head. Oh, damn. Well, Lion, almost everyone knows about it. I don't blame you since no one really likes bringing that sort of subject up. I don't think Crow or Jess would like to explain it to you. Just not Brittany. She gets riled up when it's mentioned. You're not understanding and Daryl gives you a smile. Anyway. You got something to ask, Lion? About Jess. What do you think about Jess? 
At the mention of Jess's name, Daryl's whole face turned red as he starts sweating. <laughs> what about her? I don't know. I'd like you to tell me. What do you think about her? Daryl's cheeks just keep getting redder and redder. For a moment, his gaze turned to where Jess and Brittany were. He sighs as he looks away. Jess says, sweetest human being I've ever met. Oh? That don't tell anyone. I trust you with this because Crow trusts you, okay? All right, all right. I don't know what the big fuss is all about, but I promise I won't tell. He raised her hand in surrender. The teller jock deflated on his spot, his shoulders down along with his mood. But, yeah. She's sweet, she's pretty, she's cute. While some would make fun of me, she's always there to give me a pat on the back. He groans, doubling over. His expression seems like he wants to throw up as he buries his face in his hands. I doubt she likes me back. You tilted your head, wondering why he thinks that way. What makes you say that? The way she looks at Brittany. Don't you think that's the look of someone in love? Ah! At that, your eyes widen in surprise. You quickly turn your head to where the two girls were. The eyes behind the transparent frames look like fresh citrus oranges in summer. They were bright. And they were fresh for the picking for Brittany. I know, because that's the same look I give to her when I first met her. And it's the same look I see on Crow when he looks at you. Crow likes me? He twirled a loose strand from his bangs. He looked away from the two girls and focused on your surprised figure. I hate it. I love seeing that look on her face. I wish it was on me, though. I'm sorry, Daryl. <laughs> he chuckled a bit. It's all right. Maybe one day I'll confess just to get it off my chest. All I want is to see her happy. Even if it's not with me. Anyway, enough of this sad stuff, Lion. You got something to ask? Uh, about Brittany. Daryl gives you a proud smile. Brittany, she's my first friend back when I was new to the football team. You'd be surprised that she used to be in the cheer squad despite her being quite an introvert. Brittany's an introvert? She was? Daryl's bright smile softened. A small, gloomy look in it. He was trying so hard to hide it, but it was failing. Yeah. She quit right after their game's big frat party about two years ago. The party was something else since the higher class were a part of it. The following day, she suddenly quit. Don't know why, though. Not quite worth thinking about the past, anyway. Okay, about Crow. What do you think about Crow? At a bad show the blue-eyed friend of his, Daryl gives you a toothy grin as he wiggles his eyebrow. And my guy, this is the first time I'm hearing about the fact that Crow likes me, okay? I, I knew that there were two love interests. I didn't think that the other one was Crow. You one jitsu a little crushy, don't you, Lion? Shut up! I just admire him, okay? Daryl laughed and he stopped his teasing, saving you from further embarrassment. Crow is quite an individual. All I know is that he's the son of a very successful businesswoman in the city. So I heard he doesn't have a great relationship with his family. What well, makes you say that? Daryl thought for a bit, but judging from his expression, he couldn't understand why either. I uh, know either, Lion. You could ask Crow if you want to learn more. I see. Don't worry, Lion. I'm sure he'll do anything that you ask for. He gives you a playful wink. You rolled your eyes, but gave him a smile nonetheless. Thanks for answering my questions, Daryl. Anytime, Lion. You're one of us now, so open up a little. You got something to ask? Nah, what, 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 why am I stuck? Ah, uh, I just realized I haven't actually asked about him, so I'll ask about Daryl. I'd like to know about you, Daryl. Daryl rubbed the back of his head, quite embarrassed you thought about him. Well, aren't you a flatterer? <clears throat> Where should I start? He thought for a while, his legs crossed while he waited for him as he pondered. Well, I'm the ace of the football club, but uh, I hate my coach. Don't tell him that, though. Hmm. I love food? Like, lots. My favorite would be sweets. If you ever got any on you, smuggle me some, will you? He says with a wink and a nudge. Other than that, nah, I guess that's pretty much it. Got something to ask? I'm, I've got nothing else, thank you. Daryl gives you a smile before nodding. Alright, let's go speak to Brittany. Brittany was minding her own business, seemingly tapping away on her phone. You were kind of shy to come any closer to her. Uh, before you could turn and leave, however, she called out to you. She must have seen you from the corner of her eye. Oi, Lion, come here. Don't be a stranger now. You clearly want to talk. Let me guess, were the sandwiches great? Oh, hell yeah, they were great! She smiled at your response. I'm glad you liked them, Lion. 
Anyway, enough of my sandwiches. Is something to tell me? Uh, let's see. Thoughts on Jess? Upon hearing a name, Jess's head turned to where you both were. Brittany dismissed her, telling her it's nothing for her to worry about before turning back to you. Jessie? She's my best friend. She smiled as she looked at the orange band on her wrist. She's my very best friend. And no one's there to help me. She was there. You'd be surprised how confident and loud she is when she's mad. Brittany chuckled a bit as if reminiscing a fond memory. I owe it all to her for bringing me back up during those dark times. But now for the past. If somebody would tell me? Thoughts on Geo? Brittany raised an eyebrow. Don't tell me you got the hearts for him. Maybe? He's cute. I would have preferred to go for like Hugo though. Nothing of the sorts. What makes you think that? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you do. If you can see how his locker is often filled with multiple love letters and gifts from various people, then I wouldn't be surprised. He's that popular? A loner like him? You'd be surprised. Tall, mysterious, and dangerous, everyone just flocks to him like birds. But people are too scared to even get close to him. So the next best thing they could do is to send him gifts. They never succeed, though. Is he somehow overwhelmed by the attention? Not really overwhelmed. More like he's uninterested. But he doesn't read... <sighs> he either doesn't read the letters and toss them, or... Or... He burns them. He burns them? That's mean. And a waste of gifts, too. Brittany just laughed, her shoulder shaking. That's Gia to you. How do you know all this? Brittany giggled before giving you a wink as she pressed a manicured finger on her lips as if to shush you. I know a lot of secrets. Anyway. You have something to tell me? Thoughts on Daryl. Brittany just chuckled. You mean that meathead? He's an idiot. She says with a smile and then she sighed. She shakes her head at the thought of the tall jock. He's an idiot, but he's a smart idiot. I'll give him that. He's like a brother to me. It just baffles me how he barely has any friends. How this school fails us. She shakes the idea before returning her attention back to you. You have something to tell me? Have you seen Crow? Crow? I think I saw him go deeper in the gardens. Brittany said, with the raise of her brows. Let me guess. You want to finally confess your undying feelings to it? Look! This is the first time I've heard of the fact that I apparently like him. And that he apparently likes me. I thought, like, I, I didn't think that he was an option. Okay? <laughs> or, like, you know, maybe I thought that he would have been an option, but I thought everyone would have been an option here. I, I don't know. What makes you think that? Wow. I'm not sure who is denser. Him or you. Whatever. If you need him, he's probably in the greenhouse. Brittany gives you a thumbs up, melding a good luck. As if I'm confessing, you thought with a pout. Brittany just gave you a teasing smirk. Anyway, enough about that. You have something to tell me? Uh, yeah, I got nothing else. Brittany gives you a nod before standing up from the ground. She stretches her limbs, letting out a few satisfying pops. She places a hand on her hip. I'll be cleaning a bit. I'll talk to you later, Lion. You don't want any help? No thanks. I appreciate the thought, though. You nodded as you stood up as well leaving Brittany to attend on her own devices. Let's speak to Jess. Ah, she's cute. Jess was admiring a few orange leaves slowly falling from the tree. The slow descent of her leaf catches her attention before gracefully catching it with her delicate fingers. She notices you approaching her. She dropped the leaf before giving her full attention on you. Y yeah, Lion? What seems to be a problem? Uh, nothing really. Actually, I just want to talk to you and ask a few questions. Then, by all means, go ahead. I'll try my best to answer them. You have questions to ask? Have you seen Crow? Jess's eyebrows furrowed and shakes her head. I don't think I know where Crow is. Maybe you should ask Brittany. Maybe she knows. He thanked her. Uh, okay, uh, thoughts on Geo. Jess's shoulders start shaking at the mention of the tall and stoic individual. I hate to be one of those people, but he actually scares me. Have you seen how capable he is with his bow and arrow? No. Actually, is he really that good? I only know that he's from the archery club. Oh, then you should definitely attend the sports event next year. Geo's going to compete and the higher classes will be there to determine if the students are worth bringing up. Another shiver went up her spine. She wrapped her arms around herself. A bad memory crosses her mind. But whatever, whenever that happens, Geo seems to somehow miss his targets and nearly hit someone with his arrow. What 
the hell? Thankfully, it only cuts the guy's hair and nothing else. He got disqualified, sadly, but that was enough for me to not mess with him. How is he not in jail? You tried to rack your brain for a reason why he's in school and not behind bars, but Jess cuts you off before you can think any further. Enough of that. You have questions to ask me? Yeah, what do you think of Daryl? Well, I know that you love Brittany, but what do you, what do you think of him? The mention of Daryl, Jess's face went bright. This is probably the first time you've seen a smile without shaking like a lost lamb. Oh, Daryl. He's an amazing friend. He keeps me safe and I owe it up to him. Oh, quite a lot. Though I do feel bad for him most of the time. Rainy and Geo tease him way too much. Just chuckled. Look at a jock. Sitting under the tree before returning back to you. He's a funny guy. Remember back then when I made the mistake of giving him a bowl filled with candy last year's Halloween. He did tell me he likes sweets. Why? What's wrong giving him candy? Well, he gets sugar rush pretty quickly and gets super hyper. Brittany tried so hard in calming him down. Can you imagine? A six foot tall jock going around like a playful puppy. I bet Brittany didn't have a fun time. Jess nodded with a close smile at you. I want to ask you about the girl you like. What do you think about Brittany? Upon mentioning the Gyaru's name, Brittany's head turned to the both of you. She didn't say anything but raised a brow as she tilted her head to the side. You call for me? N nothing, Brit. Jess quickly shooed her best friend away. Brittany shrugged before continuing on with her own business. Jess lets out a sigh of relief as a small tint of red raises to her cheeks. Jess looked down on her skirt, fiddling with her pink wristband as her heartbeat quickened. Brit, she's my best friend, my very best friend. I would do anything to see her happy again. She pushes back her glasses and looked at you. And there, you saw sparkles. <laughs> her smile is soft and you can tell. Jess, do you like Brittany? She was hesitant before looking down, nodding as she did so, still fiddling with her pink wristband. Promise not to tell? I promise. Thank you, Lion. This will just be between the two of us. Sides. She gives you a big smile. I'll keep your oh-so-secret towards Crow a secret too. I didn't even know that I like Crow till today! She giggled at your surprised look at the mention of Crow. You rubbed the back of your head as you pouted. I have no more questions for you. Just nods as she clasps her hands. It was wonderful talking to you, Lion. You should hang out with us more. And with that, she gives you a wave goodbye. Right, finally, let's look for Kuro. You pretty much talk with everyone here, and they all seem to be busying themselves. You looked around the garden before moving in deeper with the Red Autumn Wonderland. As you kept moving forward, you were greeted by the greenhouse. Through the transparent glass, you spot a familiar head of brown. You went inside the greenhouse and saw Crow go through each plant and flower, analyzing each delicate leaf and petal. Noticing he's not alone, he turned to where you were and smiled. Oh, there you are, Lion. What brings you here? I would say the same to you. Well, I haven't really explored this place properly before, so why not take that chance? You've never been here? Crow shakes his head. Never got the time to visit. Crow chuckles. You meet his gaze and he gives you a soft smile. His gaze lingered a bit before going around. He then found something that caught his attention. Now, this is a pretty looking flora. What do you think it is? You look at the brush of flowers filled with purple flowers, their petals thin as it showcases its full bloom. This is a passion flower. Fascinating. Tell me more about it. Well, it's a climbing vine plant. Usually its colors are purple or white. Once flowers bloom, passion fruits will bear itself. Usually a volunteer will come and harvest the fruits. That sounds interesting, Lion. But that's the scientific way to describe this flower. What about its meaning? You tilted your head to the side. What do you mean? How do I say this? He places a hand under his chin. In astrology, each star has a meaning behind it. Same goes with gemstones, like your birthstone. Flowers have those as well, correct? Huh. Never really thought about it. Crow gives you a cheeky smile. It's interesting. Passion flowers symbolize hope and growth. I love seeing the hopeful looks on people. He says as he looks at the flowers before you both. Hope. Something the city needs. 
I want to get rid of the hierarchy. Daryl mentioned something about that. Actually, everyone did. But how come I never heard of it? What's it about? I never got to explain it to you, huh? I guess now's the perfect time, since they're quite active and interacting with us in the lower class again. He looks out. Our school. Olympias University has two buildings with two different classes. One is where we are at the moment. The lower class, or around the northern part of the city, is where the higher classes are. There, education is ten times better, the facilities are better, and the students are way out of our league. He hesitates a bit in voicing his thoughts of the students in a higher class. So I highly doubt that. He added, his eyes narrowed. The lower class. Calling it lower class is kinda low in my opinion. I call them villagers, humble people. They're either really kind or either too busy to bother. There was a hint of hesitation in his voice. Well, not all. Bill students in the higher class often end up here with us. And well, they don't take it well. Which explains the bullying situation. Crow's brows slanted downward, disgusted by the idea. The fact he can't do anything is irritating him. How come no one tried to file a report or anything? People tried. I tried. We tried. But unless you either have money or a higher reputation, heck, even both, they won't even bother to listen. Crow's eyes. Which is why would some students try their hardest to get up the ranks, to be part of the higher class. All of that just to be respected? Crow didn't say anything to you but a nod. The hierarchy. Crow lets out a sad laugh. The system is kind of a, if you feel it, you feel it thing. You don't really feel it, much less see it, unless you've been at its mercy. If it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, Lion, you never know who is the next victim. A soft, sad smile made its way onto his face, which is why I strive to protect you. Both of those sound so... You were left to your thought process to what Crow told you about the newfound information. This is pro this probably explains the bullying and how the school is handled. Your position in the city is just a second priority. Heck, maybe not even a priority at all. That means if I ever want to help my family's farm out, I have to make it up there. Crow nodded before continuing. Once you're up there, you'll have a better life. You'll be respected. You'll be rich. People will do as you tell them. That's messed up. Do people ever protest? Crow, however, did not answer, as if scared that someone would hear him. He remained quiet, only giving you a look that probably says that things did not go well. You refuse to look for more elaboration. That reminds me, Lion. Crow starts. You never told me as to how or why you chose this university. Your family owns farms, correct? You bit your lip as you thought of home. We do. I wouldn't say we're doing well. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's okay. Really. It's my burden to carry and not yours. And I'm going to work hard for it. Anything. I'll do anything. And we're here to backstory again. I'm just gonna skip all this. But you're nearing the end of the school year. And you cannot afford to go back again. Not with this debt. Credits alone isn't enough to cut it. Whenever you think about it, you keep seeing the tall man's ever sharp magenta eyes burning into you. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth and a stinging feeling in your chest. Your heart ached as you stare back into Crow's own azure eyes. Are you alright there, Lion? You zoned out a bit. If... If I get to be part of the higher class, then I can have a better chance at life, right? Crow was surprised at your sudden enthusiasm, but nodded regardless. That's right. As you give Crow a reassuring smile, you clench your fist. I'll work hard to show those higher class that I'm worth their time. Crow chuckles and nods. You know that he's got your back. Then, Crow raised his hand and tucked a loose strand behind your ear. You you sensed him placing something soft as you reached out to touch what felt like petals. That looks good on you. What is it? Crow then leads you to a nearby pond. You looked and saw your reflection. On your hair is a red carnation. My guy! <laughs> Thank you! Uh, I didn't know carnations grew here. Crow only chuckled, fixing the flower in your hair. Then, Crow was silent, basking in your presence. His expression then went dim as if something's bothering him. 
You took notice, of course. Is something the matter, Crow? You blinked once, twice. He averted his gaze, a bit hesitant to speak up. You grabbed his head to reassure him that it's fine. He sighs as he speaks. Your friend. My friend? The tall one in green. What are your thoughts on him? Soul, he's, uh... He's cute. Crow chuckles at your comment, though it feels strained. Is that so? Then tell me, Lion. Do you like him? What makes you say that? You did say he's cute. I just think he's cute, that's all. Crow stopped his teasing, but the dullness in his eyes remained. Crow looks around for a while, basking the various beauties of Flora. What do you think carnation means? You tilted your head, making sure the said flower doesn't fall from your head as Crow continued on with his talk. Passion flower means hope, while carnation means... Hmm, I couldn't seem to remember. What do you think it means, Lion? You thought for a while, knowing some carnations are to be found in bouquets. Well, it has to be something romantic. They're often a perfect gift to family and loved ones. Is that so? I might have to look up what it means then. Their eyes met his, and for a moment, his gaze lingered. Were his eyes always this blue? He never noticed before. The way his lashes flutter and touch his cheeks when he blinks, his plump lips are always glistening whenever sunlight hits them. His eyes went half-lidded as he leaned closer and closer, as if in a trance. Your eyes slowly start to close. Lean in! I lean in! I lean in! I lean in! As if you lost control of your body, and it started moving on its own, you lean closer as well. Your eyes are now closed, feeling his breath near your lips as he draws closer and closer. Bro, we bet- uh, uh, Of course, Brittany! Your eyes popped open, and you quickly backed away. Crow backed away as well as you waved to Brittany. Brittany just raised the brow at the both of you before shrugging it off and leaving the greenhouse. Crow sighed, seemingly disappointed before giving you his hand for you to take. We should get going. You pouted at the moment, ruined before accepting his extended hand and left the greenhouse with Crow. You and the rest of the group got back into campus. Everyone already went back to their respective classes. I'm going to head back first. I'll see you in class, Lion? Yeah, of course. Crow didn't just... Crow didn't walk away just yet. He stood there for a bit, contemplating something before shaking his head and walking away, a tint of red touching the tips of his ears as he walked. Just by the corner of your eye, you spot two familiar-looking individuals. It was Sol and Hugo. Sol noticed you first and went to you, a noticeable skip in his steps. Lion. Hey, Sol. Hey, Hugo. Are you both heading to your next class? Hugo laughed, a hand on his chest, as if you told him a very funny joke. Actually, I have a better idea. A skip class. Skip class? You'll be fun. Sol gave Hugo a punch on his rib, making the short mill choke out the words he was supposed to say as he doubles over and clutched his stomach. Let's ditch. Hugo just gave him a glare. Sol ignored him as he anticipated your answer. Hanging out with these two sound fun. Remember your next class with Crow. Maybe you can... Nope. Oh. We're definitely skipping class, and we all know where this goes. So, hey, that is the end for day two of The Kid at the Back. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. This, I have to say, has got to be my favorite game in this particular genre. I did love how they expanded more on the backstory of the world. I love how they expanded the backstory of the different characters. And it seems like they are really spicing it up with drama, depending on like which route you take. And god damn it, I I am all here for it. I'm all here for it. I am definitely looking forward to part three of this. And I know it's going to take a while, but hey, um, I, I'm i still looking forward to it nonetheless. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.